Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews and this is my review for the season finale of Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power Angry Andy Angry Andy Reviews Angry Andy So, The Rings of Power is over, at least for season one at least, and this has been a bit of a shitty mess. I'm just going to go straight to it. Um, initially, the start of the season, I was hopeful. I enjoyed the first two episodes, without doubt, um, but it quickly trailed off when I realised the futility of everything, the thinness how utterly weightless it is. I am recording this in my kitchen because I've got better things to do um, than sit and do a decent recording on this. So it's pretty much on the fly. Um, what a what a what a, a bit of a waste! What a bit of a waste, really. The acting throughout, other than a few characters, Elrond, uh, Durin, and to a point Galadriel at certain certain intervals. The acting, weightless, thin, theatre in education. If you've ever seen a theatre in education show, and I know because I used to do them, you just spaff it out. You just kind of, you know, recite the lines after a few occasions, um, and then you go home, you crack open a beer, and you go, <laughs> crap, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning to get to Sheffield from Manchester. <laughs> um, that kind of thing. Um, and it permeates through this entire series. There is no denying, and I will free, freely admit, there is no denying that this show, even in the finale, looks bloody superb. It absolutely looks amazing. They have thrown money at this show throughout. Absolutely no doubt. What they've done, however, is by launching money at it, and this is Amazon, they've launched money at this like they have launched countless parcels of mine through the door. Um, and remember, Amazon is... A primarily a, a a worldwide worldwide mail you know ordering service of a regressive magnitude, um, a obsessive magnitude I should say, um, and they just decided to dip their toe into TV, and thus we have you know them splurging a billion dollars on uh, Amazon uh, on, uh, on Amazon on uh, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, and that's what it seems here. They splurged money into the effects. They splurged money into costumes, which look good at certain points. Apart from the Numenorians, their armor looks utterly awful. Numenorians are supposed to be these these humongous warriors that decimate entire things, whose power is undone by hubris. Um, in this, they look like I don't know cheap knockoffs of the Riders of Rohan, and they look pathetic in places. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's it's a shell. It's a shell of what Lord of the Rings is. And I'm not talking about the bloody films. I'm not talking about the bloody films. I'm talking about the stories, the written lore, the written logic, the written poetry of all of these civilizations. And yet, in this season, they're all treated as, you know, idiots. The writing is awful. It has been awful throughout. It sounds like Tolkien. It reads like Tolkien. But it comes across as a Frankenstein imitation. I said this in my previous review. It's all just an imitation. It's not... It has no weight behind it. There is no weight. They're just saying lines. And in this episode, the finale, we get the final reveal of who Sauron is. And let me tell you... It, if you didn't guess who Sauron was in the first bloody instance when he appeared, you're a fucking moron. You're an idiot. Because it was so obvious. This show put in mystery boxes for no reason. And, oh, bloody hell, news articles lapped it up. Oh, the mysterious stranger with the beard. He's got to be Sauron, hasn't he? Because of all this weird, horrible stuff he's doing. Oh, 
this other guy who Galadriel um, bonds with, who f- conveniently follows around to all these important places, sees all these important people, is declared leader of the Southlands, which turns into Mordor. Conveniently, he's with Galadriel the entire time. Oh, he's not Sauron. He's just a nice guy. Idiots. I don't know whether they were paid to sort of try and throw people off. But it was abundantly obvious from the fucking outset. And painfully obvious at that. They tried to shoehorn in these minor mysteries. These little things that would push you away. And try and send you off in a different direction of thought. Well, it didn't work. The (laughs) twist. There was no twist. Absolutely no twist. You get to the point and you go, yeah, yeah, saw that coming. Saw that coming. And I am, I should have put, put, uh, at this point, retroactively reviewing my own review um, before editing it. I will have put a spoiler warning up already, but yeah, I'm I'm telling spoilers because this show is disastrous in construct. The whole idea that the mysterious stranger who does turn out to be Gandalf, um, I guess, great, saw that coming a mile away, um... You know, he, he he says lines from the original film just to cement that fact. Um, the guy who plays Sauron, I'm guessing the reason he he becomes ultimately evil is because he proposes to Gladwell in this episode. Not directly, indirectly, I would say. Um, he proposes to her a, a marriage of convenience so that they can rule together. And she flower rejects him. So that, I guess, makes him angry to the point where he's like, OK, I'm off to Mordor now. So you're telling me one of the greatest written villains in history, who is ultimately purely evil for the sake of being purely evil, because that is his nature. The reason he is evil in connection with these films is because Galadriel did not accept his hand in marriage. Wow. Wow. Excellent. If you can hear my daughter in the background, you know, that's the kind of thing that's going through my head at the moment. Just this inept screaming, this this, this constant churning of, of misery. She's quite happy. She's got a lovely toy. I'm not happy because this show was garbage. Absolutely garbage. The musical score, again, took cues from, you know, from the films. Um, and yet, weirdly inept, weirdly sort of just on the surface, didn't really have any weight behind it, didn't match what we were seeing on screen. You have all these these trumpets, these violins and things like that, and it's it's weightless, it's designed to try and give you an emotional response because what you're seeing on screen isn't doing the job. Man alive. (laughs) The way that I see this show is that it is sort of like one of those unauthorised sort of remake kind of things like never say never again the james bond film now, there isn't a james bond film but was created with sean connery in the role as james bond but wasn't an official james bond movie because they couldn't get the rights that's what this fucking show is this show lord of the rings the rings of power is never say never again <laughs> with all the with all the shitness within that i mean Never Say Never Again has got its jabs, and so does Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. But ultimately, it's weightless. It's weightless. There are no surprises. There are no tricks. There's no quality writing. Everybody is an unlikable character in this, bar Elrond and Durin. But you don't see anything of Durin in this episode. You see Elrond, and Elrond's going a bit sort of weird. He... Um, once Galadriel's discovered the true identity of Sauron via the use of a scroll, and you've got to think, well, why why didn't she fucking do this sort of research when she initially sort of came, you know, to the 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 idea the idea of um, Halbrand, you know, taking on, you know, she could have sent a messenger or something, or you know, gone off because everyone teleports in this series. She could have gone off herself and you know come back and go, hey, you're a liar, I'm gonna kill you now. In the middle of nowhere, um, you know, and solve the issues of the the entire universe. Um, but yeah, <sighs> what a fucking mess! And people do teleport around this world. This world is massive. It took Frodo 
and the party. 12 months. 12 whole months to get there and back. In this... <laughs> From the last episode where Halbrand is completely injured, and I'm guessing he was faking it, how I don't know, from he gets from wherever they were in the Southlands all the way across to uh, where they need to be in order to create the rings. A journey, according to map law, would take approximately six days. All this time, he's completely gravely wounded, can barely stand up. He would not have fucking survived, but alas, he does survive, and we get no reason for him surviving. He just turns up looking a bit injured. And then the next scene, he's ap- approaching Celebrimbor. Again, ultimately symbolising, oh, I, I am Sauron because I'm immediately, I'm immediately corrupting Celebrimbor <laughs> to create fucking rings for me. And the greatest fucking travesty beyond that is that we don't see any real influence from, from Sauron in terms of the other rings. We see these rings created by the elves, which... I think there's a bit of a, a bit of a confusion as to whether who who created what. I'm pretty sure the elves created the rings themselves, anyway. But beyond that, there's no sort of learning from. Um, I thought the I thought the other rings came first. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I might be confused on that myself. I'm no law specialist, but I know enough to know when I'm being fucking cheated out of certain things. But I'm I'm pretty sure there was the, we never saw anything where. Uh, Halbrand was actually engaging, investing in how to create rings himself. So when he teleports to Mordor at the end of the episode, and I mean teleports, um, we we see nothing. We see nothing of his learning. We see nothing of any of his designs. Um, the show leaves threads open, countless threads open. <laughs> I, I get we're going into season two, but fucking hell, you've got to give us some satisfying conclusion. In, th- in this episode, there is no satisfying conclusion to anything. It ends with a whimper and it drifts off into the awful recreation of the song. Well, it's not even a song. They sing you out with the with the poem of uh, the rings. Um, yeah. And there you go. This is a billion dollar show, and their ineptitude is clear to see. What a disaster. What an absolute disaster. For the finale, I, I'm, I'm out completely. I'm completely out. Disastrously so, disappointingly so. I'm broken by this series. Um, <laughs> I, I have to give this finale... A, f- a three out of ten. God almighty. A three out of ten. The only bonus for me was that, you know, Galadriel see some fucking sense. Maybe she won't be quite so, you know, hard ham-fisted in the next season. And that's the thing. You could have forgiven the, a lot of Galadriel's behaviour in this in the show. Had they sort of suggested that from the very outset, when she meets Halbrand, that immediately he was corrupting her, forcing her, not forcing her, but playing with her mind in order to make her do certain things, go certain places. But they don't even do that. They just do a weird dream state where she sees her brother and sees Halbrand, and Halbrand goes, oh, do you want to marry me, Kark? And he goes, nah, nah, I don't want to. And Halbrand goes, all right, then I'm evil now, I'm Sauron. All right, then, we'll see you on the battlefield. Great. Superb writing. I mean, <laughs> it would have been more entertaining if that was the discourse. But there you go. A three out of ten. And the series on the whole, I don't do series overall, but the series overall has been a, a, a steep decline for me. And it's weird watching this alongside House of the Dragon, where for me, they were both on even keel. Unknowns, bit unsure, up and downs initially in the first three episodes. And then the trajectory has changed. House of the Dragon has soared upwards and upwards over a steady curve rings of power has dived dived like a struck a bomber what a disappointment but there you go lord of the rings the rings of power episode finale three out of ten god they're already starting on season two i guess i'll have to be back for that won't i anyway thank you very much for watching bye bye